Welcome to Sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Jesus also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you no longer can be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is yours? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, we cannot look into people's hearts to discern what people believe and think. We simply cannot. So in a way, we cannot judge individuals because we can't see inside their hearts and their minds. However, yes, however, we can see and we can hear people's deeds and their words and their actions, because these things are visible and audible. And so when people say things and do things around us, these actions, they reveal a portion of what is going on in their heart, whether good or whether bad. Yes, deeds and words and actions They betray the heart and mind. Like a bad poker face, deeds and words and actions tell you what is being held in the card player's hand. So, for example, let us look at the manager's deeds and words and actions from today's parable, from our gospel reading from Luke. In the gospel reading from Luke, we heard that the manager was accused of mismanagement and was fired on the spot immediately, and he was told to turn in the record books. But before the manager turned in the books, without the consent of the landlord, he shrewdly and crookedly called in several laborers and made a settlement. 
He made a settlement of debts which favored the laborers. In this way, the crooked manager made friends with the laborers so that he could live with them after he had turned in the books. Now, the manager's deeds, his words, and his actions, we would have to admit this morning that they were devious. Smart and shrewd, but devious. Now, we must pause and clarify several things at this point. You see, Jesus is not showing us Christians that the manager is some model citizen that we should emulate and imitate. Jesus is not advocating lying. He's not advocating cheating and stealing. However, Jesus is showing us that the way in which the manager shrewdly and wisely used the money reveals something about his heart. His actions and his words, they point to a much deeper problem right here. So how did he use the money? Yes, how did this manager use the money? Well, as already stated, he cheated the landlord. He was very dishonest. He took the record books and used the landlord's money to obtain future security for himself. By doing this, the manager was proving himself to be very wise, no doubt about it. Not only had he been cheating the landlord in the past, but he stuck it to that landlord even after he was fired. So as a result, the manager obtained future security by cheating everyone. Let's be honest here now. If your God is yourself, if your God is money and possessions and the pleasures of this world, then you've got to admit this morning that the manager knocked it out of the park. I mean, if the manager feared and loved and trusted the landlord, he would not have done what he did. If the manager feared and loved and trusted in God, he, would also, he also would not have done what he did. But because the manager had no fear of the landlord, because this manager had no God, except himself and his earthly desire of wealth and security, well, he went the way of wickedness. And like a mastermind criminal, he shrewdly took care of business that day. But that brings us back to our previous point this morning. What do his actions say about his heart? What do his actions reveal about himself as a person? Well, it's quite simple. You see, if you find yourself lying and cheating and stealing to secure your future and pad your wallet it goes to show that there is something wrong in the heart. And what might be wrong in that heart? Well, the answer is this. You are not serving God, but you are serving money. You're serving possessions and the pleasures of this world. Or as they used to say in those olden days, you are serving mammon. Yes, mammon. Dear friends, you cannot serve two masters. If you worship mammon, that is money and material things and anything that promises you security other than God, then you end up acting like the crooked manager. And as we are beginning to see, the manager lied and he cheated and he stole because his God was mammon. Frankly stated, because the manager feared and loved and trusted money and possessions and earthly securities, well, he cheated everyone. Because of his narcissistic, hungry stomach, he craved not God and the God's good gifts for us, but he craved the things of this life. The manager used his conniving wisdom to work the landlord over. The manager only cared about himself, serving himself, and so his actions reflected his self-centered greediness. To the point, though, the manager's actions show us that he was a faithful, yes, a faithful servant, not of God, but a faithful servant of mammon. He was a model zealot for money. He was that poster child, the big cheese, the numeral uno, the top gun disciple and servant of money and wealth and possessions, mammon. The manager was fully developed in his wickedness because of his fully developed fear and love and trust of mammon. His his psyche and his thoughts were pinpointed on mammon. 
His thoughts bent inwardly on money. Show me the money. And so the manager, yes, that manager, has shown us visibly on that outside, on the outside by his words, by his actions, and by his deeds, that he would do anything to serve the God of mammon, to serve money. So what does this mean, though, this morning? What does this mean? It means that we have a comparison of opposites. We see what it looks like to fear, love, and trust in mammon, that is money and possessions, rather than God. We see the opposite side of the coin. We see the opposite side of the spectrum. The parable from today, yes, is showing us the opposite way of how things should be, what it looks like to have mammon as a master. Money as a master and not the Lord. Now, with all of this said, this parable then leads us to a very uncomfortable place this morning. And that is this. What do your words, yes, what do your words and your actions and your deeds say about your heart? What do my words and what do my deeds and my actions say about mine? Who are you serving? Are you serving mammon or the Lord God? Now, dear friends, I'm not trying to place some North American guilt, North American materialistic guilt upon you by asking this, but rather I'm asking you a very concrete and specific question for a very specific purpose. Who do you serve? Who is your master? What do your words and your actions and your deeds Every single day, seven days out of the week, what do those words and those actions and deeds say about your heart? If given two choices, do you chase and seek after the Benjamins, yes, that money, or do you hunger and thirst for God? You cannot serve two masters. Jesus says you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God, and you cannot serve mammon. You cannot serve Lord and money. You will either love one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other. You cannot have both as equal masters. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on you and me too. Dear baptized saints, you cannot have two masters. And the reason why is this, that there is no substitute for Jesus. And furthermore, you cannot, yes, I repeat, you cannot have two masters because you do not belong to mammon, but you belong to Jesus. You were not purchased. I repeat, you were not purchased with gold or silver, but you were purchased with Jesus' precious blood. There's more. Think of it this way. Money and possessions and the pleasures of this world are lifeless, motionless things. They are not lasting or eternal. They are simply tools that we use in this life. Therefore, to derive our worth, our identity from them, well, it is foolish, my friends, to fear and love and trust in mammon. No way, no how. Money and possessions and earthly pleasures have no power to possess you and me and to protect us. They're fleeting. They're vanity. A puff of wind. They're not alive. They are mere tools in this life. We cannot take them to the grave, and they certainly do not protect us from the grave. But Jesus does. Yes, Jesus does. Jesus does protect us from the grave. We can indeed go to the grave with Jesus because he owns us. He is our master. And so as blood-bought, baptized Christians, we know that our goal is the exact opposite of the manager. In other words, your joy and your security are not in mammon but in Jesus. Your, your Christ and your Savior. Your wisdom is not in selfish shrewdness, but in Jesus. 
Your fear and your love and your trust are not in some lifeless dollar bill or some comatose material object or some temporary earthly pleasure, but in God who created you, God who redeemed you, and God who sanctified you. And your master is not some unresponsive mammon, but the living, active, powerful, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. So, dear baptized saints, fear and love and trust in Jesus. For in Jesus, your future is secure. In Jesus, you have one who is a friend of sinners. In Jesus, you have everything that is needful and lasting. In him you need no other, for he holds your future, he holds your well-being, and he holds your faith, and he holds your forgiveness of sins and lavishly bestows it upon you as a sheer and complete gift. In the name of your Master and your Lord, Jesus Christ. Thy strong word bespeaks us righteous, bright with thine own holiness. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit St. Paul's website at www.stpaulsminot.org. The Lord bless and keep you.